Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be taking an early look at the summer of 2021. Obviously, my official summer of 2021 forecast will be coming out in about two weeks or so. Anyways, for today's comment of the day, I want to know how do you expect this upcoming summer to go? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Now, as we begin to talk about some more longer range things, I want to start talking more about those sea surface temperature anomalies. So we're going to talk about all of those different things. Obviously, this has some implications for the hurricane season, some very large ones uh, at that, but also looking towards the temperature pattern for the summer and even beyond for the fall and the winters of 2021 uh, into 2022, uh, which we're also going to be talking about soon as well. Those winter thoughts videos are coming up soon. Uh, we're going to start talking about the fall in about a month or two. So it's all just right around the corner. Let's add those different regions on screen here just with the names so that I can show you exactly what they are. First things first are PDO, and that's that blue circled region. Uh, and that is an area where we either see, obviously, above normal sea surface temperatures or below normal sea surface temperatures. And this actually directly influences the temperatures onshore of the West Coast. And that basically downstream, as the winds typically go from west to east, affects the eastern United States as well. If it's cold in the western United States, we do expect warmer than normal conditions uh, in the eastern United States. If it's warm in the western United States, we expect colder than normal conditions in the eastern United States. Uh, so that really plays a huge role in our temperature patterns across the entire United States. And right now we're in a negative PDO phase, as you can see, mostly blues within that blue circle. Uh, so that we are kind of heading into a negative PDO pattern. Uh, and we're going to have to wait and see how this develops. Will it continue to stay negative or will it warm up? We're just going to have to wait and see. Our ENTO is still a weak La Nina. This is obviously going to have massive implications for the hurricane season. Usually La Nina means more hurricanes. Uh, El Nino means a little bit less, so for now, if we're staying in a La Nina, that is obviously a massive deal for the hurricane season of the upcoming uh, 2021 tropical season. We have our NAO up there south of Greenland. That looks to be in a negative phase. I know this is hard to understand, but when we see warmer than normal conditions, typically that's a negative NAO, and when we see colder than normal waters, we usually see a positive NAO. The negative NAO encourages colder air into the eastern United States. So that is kind of what we're expecting to see more of over the next year or so. Usually we're in these longer range patterns with these three oscillations that I'm showing right here. So that is why I say the next year or so. Our ENSO will be ever changing and it is kind of transitioning a little bit. We're leaning towards a La Nina heading into the upcoming winter because usually you see two La Nina years in a row. Usually not just one. Usually you see one and then another one and then we finally will head into an El Nino. That would be historically expected for the 2022 towards the end of 2022. I mean, this is looking so far ahead. The PDO runs on a much even longer uh, time frame than that, usually 10 years plus. So that is some very long range oscillations, obviously. Very, very awesome stuff. Now, what we're going to do here in a moment is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the seven-day temperature change on the entire oceans of the of the entire world and just see how these have been evolving over the past seven days. And then we're going to get into some surface maps. All right, now here's the seven-day change. And as you can see, overall, I think we're seeing a lot more cooling than we are seeing warming over the past seven days, especially in the Pacific there. As you can see, things have gotten a bit colder, especially in that La Nina region, which is quite interesting because we were heading more towards an El Nino or a neutral Enso for a while there. But it looks like some cooling has really occurred over the past seven days. Also, that negative PDO, again, along the North American coast there, uh, the west coast of North America, that is, has cooled significantly as well. So here is the CFS model's uh, three-month forecast for temperatures for June, July, August, which is meteorological summer from June 1st through the very end of August. And as you can see, this is what we would call an omega block pattern. And, and it looks like a horseshoe of warmth. So we see warm along the west coast, the southern United States, and then the east coast. And then we see cooler temperatures there in the very middle. That would be an omega block pattern. Uh, and that is what the models are trending at right now. We have in years past seen patterns like this persist for uh, a long, long time, like three months, you know, plus talking about possibly even an entire year of mostly Omega block patterns. So it'd be interesting to see if we carry into the winter looking at a pattern very similar to this. Only time could tell, obviously, uh, but I think it was the year of 2018 into 2019 where we saw a pattern very, very similar to this 
last pretty much a year or maybe a bit more. Now, as far as the precip precipitation, this is going to be a little bit harder to predict. Uh, it looks like mostly the eastern half of the country is going to be dealing with some uh, more more precipitation than what is typical, especially for the Gulf states and then even up through the upper Midwest and the Ohio Valley, the Great Lakes regions. Uh, and the western United States is kind of a toss-up. This model doesn't seem to have an opinion yet. Uh, this is 12 runs uh, kind of combined here, so we get a, a very averaged out rendition uh, at times when it's a little bit further out. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what the Climate Prediction Center has to say about this. And really they're calling for warmer than normal conditions for the entire United States and all of Alaska. This never ends up actually being this way, but it is very common to see them make a forecast like this. So don't pay any mind to this whatsoever. I think the only thing we can really pay mind to is that they expect the most warm areas to be the West Coast, the Southern United States, and the East Coast. So they kind of see that Omega block pattern as well. Uh, but you can basically assume that somewhere in the middle there, we will not have above average temperatures. Uh, we will most likely have below normal temperatures for a great, uh, very large region of the United States, or at least near normal. Uh, this is just something you have to kind of decipher through here when you're looking at the Climate Prediction Center forecasts. All right, now in a moment, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at their precipitation forecast, which is a little bit more uh, valid uh, and then we're going to go ahead and take a look at some of those sea surface temperature anomalies on a chart. All right, now here we are taking a look at the Climate Prediction Center's precipitation forecast. And just like what we saw in the CFS model, we see more uh, precipitation than what, what is normal there along the eastern seaboard there. This one's a little bit further east. Obviously, we saw the, uh, the CFS model was showing the Gulf states, the upper Midwest, the, the Ohio Valley having above average precipitation. This small, uh, or sorry, this, the Climate Prediction Center doesn't necessarily have that. They also have some more dry conditions for the northwestern United States expected. Very, very interesting. Um, and that would be kind of like an El Nino pattern. So I'm curious to see what their thoughts are on our ENSO region uh, and what they're expecting as far as El Nino or La Nina this year. Now here's the charts for the Nino 3.4 index. Uh, so as you can see, we've been actually warming since the winter time. So at the very left-hand side, you can see February is where we were at. Uh, and it's been warming ever since then more towards a neutral and so, or possibly even El Nino, but it has cooled a little bit over the past 10 days or so. We're gonna have to wait and see uh, if that stays a neutral and so, if it goes back towards La Nina, or if it goes to an El Nino. I do not think it'll go to an El Nino though. I think it's gonna go more in the La Nina direction. Uh, seems the most likely at this point. Now for the entire North Atlantic, and this has implications especially for the hurricane season, we are far above normal temperatures for the entire uh, North Atlantic overall, which is going to have, like I said before, massive implications for the hurricane season. Now for the main development region, if you haven't seen our hurricane season forecast yet, you should go check that out. I explain what the main development region is, but basically it's the area between the Caribbean and Africa, and this is where a lot of hurricanes and tropical storms start out at. Uh, and obviously having warmer than normal sea surface temperatures is a huge deal for this region. And as you can see, we expect that around now we're at more near normal sea surface temperatures for that main development region. Uh, we're going to have to really see if we warm up further or if we just see kind of uh, just, you know, more neutral temperatures there near normal, uh, which would be good enough, especially if there's a La Nina causing less shear than what, you know, is typical. But Really, I think we're going to be heading more towards the La Nina. I think that main development region is probably going to warm up as it has in the past years uh, more times than not. Uh, and that is what I expect for the hurricane season. I do have more hurricane season videos coming up, so we will talk a lot more about that in the upcoming videos. Anyway, for today's confidence tab, we're at a 4 out of 6, which is our maximum for long-range forecasts. Uh, obviously, we're only about two weeks away from the beginning of summer, so we're very close to the summertime. We're going to be coming out with our official summer forecast in the very, very beginning of June. I'm very excited to release that for you guys. Hopefully this was a great sneak peek and it gave you guys some information that you might've been curious about about this upcoming summer of 2021. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I wanna thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, John Ben Benick, James Wade, Dovin Nagel, Larry the Pan, and Donna Carnes, alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Michael Buell, Catbite, Charles Dinnett, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Flago, Garys, John Qualisi, and Dwight Phelan. If you would like to be a part of this exciting Patreon highlight of the day, you can do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I would also like to thank our two, our two channel members, Hair Farms 1 and Catbite. If you would like to join this, that will be next to that subscribe button down below. 
Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button. Be sure to leave a comment down below. And be sure to subscribe if you like weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.